Welcome back to Full City Cation. This is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking once more about tonics, pharmaceuticals, or TNXB. Now, in this video, I haven't covered, well, I'll be covering due diligence technical analysis, but I haven't covered TNXB in forever. But anyway, starting off, tonics, pharmaceuticals, just in case you haven't heard about them in a while or don't remember what they do. So, at tonics, we're focused on identifying developing candidates that have promised to treat and prevent human diseases and alleviate suffering. Now, through our own developments in licensing collaboration and acquisition, we are curating an innovative and effective portfolio that targets the relief of pain, attenuates infection. Currently, our pipeline is primarily focused on central nervous system, CNS, immunology, and COVID-19 product candidates. We are progressing small molecules and biologicals or biologics to treat pain, neurologic, psychiatric, and addiction conditions through our CNS portfolio. Our immunology portfolio includes, or, uh, includes vaccines to prevent infectious diseases and biologics to address immunosuppression and cancer and autoimmune disease. And then I do talk about some of the products that are a bit more uh, useful for the time being. Now, on another point, we're able to see some of their pipeline. So some of their pipeline actually includes COVID-19 as a big part of it. There's around four different pipelines related to COVID-19. TNX-1800, which is a phase one start anticipated in the second half of 2022, and TNX-102SL for long COVID-19 post-acure seculus of COVID-19 or PASC. This phase two start is around first half of 2022. You also have the tnx 2100, which is a SARS CoV 2 diagnostic for T cell immunity, which is first in human study around the first quarter of 2022, and the TNX 3500, which is a COVID 19 antiviral, which is currently preclinical. You also have Biodefense, which is TNX 801, which is smallpox and monkeypox preventing vaccine, which is preclinical, and TNX 07 or 701 for radio protection under preclinical. And finally, immunology and oncology, you have on TNX 1500, organ transplant rejection or autoimmune condition, which is anticipated to start in phase one for the second half of 2022, and TNX 1700, which is gastric and pancreatic cancer preclinical. So you're able to see the furthest they are is really relating towards COVID-19 and COVID uh, products. So they're really betting hard on COVID parts for their COVID and biodefense and immunology portfolio. Now they also have something called a CNS portfolio, which you're able to see it has something, uh, for instance, TNX102SL, fibromyalgia, post-traumatic stress disorder, and long or long COVID. And this is respectively starting mid phase three and phase two start first quarter of 2022 and first half of 2022 again respectively what i mentioned before on first three and then you also have the cocaine intoxication or overdose which is expected to, for phase two to start in the fourth quarter of 2021 and migraine and brain facial pain around first half or sorry second half of 2022 for phase two start and we also have prater will syndrome which is preclinical depression ptsd new cognitive uh, dysfunction from steroids for phase two start in first half of 2022. Now, TNX 1600, depression, PTSD, and ADHD are preclinical as well. So you're able to see recombined or recombinant ox vaccine. Uh, that's a part of it for the new vaccine technology for emerging diseases. And they're trying to really get this off track. Now they do talk a bit more about the details of each of them, but this is out of the scope of this video. Now, in terms of the latest news, the latest news comes out on November 23rd. Tonics Pharmaceuticals announces FDA clearance of IND for potential or, or patented intransil oxytocin for preventing migraine headaches and chronic megritis. So approximately $4 million in, or $4 million in the U.S. are suffering from this. The development of TNX-1900 also planned for treatment of episodic migraine and insulin resistance and others as well. So for this one here, the FDA IND is cleared to begin clinical trials and it's a good sign. 
The next thing was on November 22nd, which is basically talking about the publication of a paper relating to one of their products for SARS-CoV-19. And the last one uh, on November 15, 2021, they announced is the issued of a US patent for the TNX 1700. In terms of insiders, we see a per last purchase with an insider was at a price point of around 61 cents. Before that, it was around 112. The price point is at 38 cents. So it's definitely cheaper than what insiders bought. Now, in terms of institutional buyers, you're able to see a massive liquidation, uh, specifically early on in 2021. Uh, a lot of companies kind of just threw out the measure of their position they had here on it, including Savvy Management, liquidating by either 100 or up to 90% of their position. Now, in terms of institutions, you don't see much going on. I mean, Vanguard has some and acquired some, but it's mainly just uh, has been reducing in values as you get to see the value change has been decreasing. Now, last but not least, compliance. So this company has until March 2nd, 2022 to reach a compliance period, which would require for it for the company to maintain above $1 for 10 consecutive days. Otherwise, it will meet a reverse split, which is never good for a stock. Now, let's move on towards technical analysis. But if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click, click the subscribe button notifications on don't forget to drop a like to this video as well if you enjoyed it so far and you can join our discord if you'd like to do so let's move on now towards technical analysis now from a technical analysis perspective what we do get to see for tnxp of course the stock is going downwards and it's in a downtrend and it doesn't really take a genius to show you that the moving averages aren't looking that great the price point is below all moving average bands uh, if you were taking a look at 50 SMA, 30 MA, 10 SMA, or 200 SMA, the price point is below all of them. But on the ADX, it doesn't show much of a movement. It's more of a sloppy kind of sideways trade that this one is playing on. Willing percent R is showcasing that this one is heavily oversold, suggesting there's more supply than there is a demand for the stock. There's a lot more selling activities than there is in buying activities. The MACD here is attempting a positive reversal in the next week or so. You're able to see it had a higher histogram, but currently the histogram is going downwards. But in the last two days, it increased just a little, which could be a warning sign. Momentum. It almost attempted a positive reversal on momentum, where it was a negative 0.04, and currently it's a negative 0.11. So that is a dangerous thing on its own. You got to be very careful because this stock does seem like it's being pulled downwards, especially in the last two days after it attempted somewhat of a bounce. It looked really like a dead cat bounce. Now, stochastic fast and stochastic slow both are suggesting to hold and wait on to see what's happening because neither of them are curving or really at the bottom. They're kind of just being acting a bit weird. Uh, so the indicator itself isn't really suggesting anything significant. Now, the Bollinger Bands and the moving average bands. Expecting the Bollinger Bands to trade between $0.57 cents and $0.37. Cents. Moving average bands between $0.52 and $0.42 cents with $0.47 cents in the middle. Although, they're all diving downwards and that's a dangerous sign on its own. This stock is suggesting that there is a strong downward volume that this stock is following under and a downtrend that could easily reach new lows. Now, on Fibonacci tracements, we're able to see the first resistances are at 79, 104, 125, 146, 175, and 212, and the support is at 38 cents. Now, 38 cents is a new low for this one. Of course, uh, not really taking into account the reverse split of 1 to 10 that happened uh, on the 1st of November 2019, and as well another one that happened on 28th of November 2018. Now, from a price line action, this stock here is really at a bottom at 38 cents. So that's, there's no other supports other than that. Resistances, 45 cents, 51 cents, 57, 60 cents, going upwards to 65, and then 70 cents, and then 76, and then 81, and then upwards to 94, and then 102, going to 107, 115, and then higher up to around 118, you're able to see the plot 124, 131, 138, 143, up to 150, and up to 159. Comes to the question to add, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, it is honestly 
a bit of a mix. Even analysts aren't really mentioning much about this one. They reiterated a buy three months ago, but really even their success rate isn't that good when you look at it. This company here is betting significantly still on COVID, but they have other pipelines that really need to pay attention. Uh, a lot of people are taking this one as a COVID play, and it's no longer that really. This far in the game, COVID shouldn't be the main fundamentals for a stock, but rather the other pipelines that are waiting by. So for this company, I do think they have a chance. But as any biopharmaceutical company, when the market is a little bit weak or hazy, these stocks really drop significantly. But overall, I do think that this is inevitably going to reach a reverse split sometime in the future. Unless something tr basically tragic happens and turns the stock upside down, I don't know, the vaccines that are currently developed somehow aren't as effective to new variants and this one's clinical trials apparently showcase a really positive spin that could be it or uh, a new pandemic with monkeypox or whatever and this one has uh currently in the work some of these vaccines so it's really a little bit of a pivotal point that this one is kind of betting on and it's a bit of a dangerous thing to hold what do you think about the sticker make sure to down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one. Feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day.